<clears throat> All right, Nick, you got some uh, really interesting, you know, comments in this, in this video rep uh, to, that, that <clears throat> especially with regard to the the government, and you know, we we talk about the bankers, but it's really the money power. Okay, so the, the either the tension between the political power and the money power or um, kind of the conspiratorial cooperation uh, um, among the money power and the political power. Um, and <clears throat> so I, what I, this, uh, this is what I want to say about it, okay? That uh, whereas you portray the banks and the government as, as you know, being in a, being some form of you know, an interlocked structure, Okay, uh, the nature, the real nature of the political power, okay, and the financial power is more like this, Nick. Okay, this here, this right here is the banks, and this right here is the government, okay. So, that's the real nature of it, okay. Uh, We'll, we'll see if the Ron Paul uh, bill, Grayson bill, gets uh, to a vote on the floor of the House or not, and, and what happens with that, um, the audit to Fed bill, uh, in, a, in a minor attempt to have the politicians understand something about what's going on with the Fed and the money system, you know, so the relationship is one of uh, the banks tell the government what to do and the government does it. Okay, that's that's really the relationship. Um, remember the day that it started for us in the United States? That was when you know, before before Bush, you know, stood in deer in the headlights thing and and said, uh, my secretary, the Treasury, told me that the financial markets are in danger of collapse. And if that happens, ladies and gentlemen, the history up until yesterday, it will be forgotten. Um, you know, the 9-11 of finance. Um, and my question to you, to I mean, to, I mean this is to, to think about, okay? First of all, how many people in the government knew that that was the case, that the financial system was in that kind of a situation that the Secretary of the Treasury, and by the way, is he representing the bankers, or is he representing the people of the United States, you know, is he really representing the ones that are concerned about, you know, employment and wages and all that, or is he concerned about the ones that are the financial marketeers? Paulson, the banker, and the Secretary of the Treasury is representing the banking system, okay? And he's going to the government and he's saying, uh, you know, he's saying, I need 750 large you know, when you're uh, when you're you know when you're in that area. 750 large <coughs> instead of being being a thousand is, is is billion. Okay, so I need 750 billion. You know, if I don't get 750 billion, you know, the financial system's going to come crashing down. Massive unemployment, a depression like you've never seen. Uh, you know, that, a lot of the things that we're having right now. So, but my point is, is it, nobody in the government really understood that. If there were a couple of people in the government, they were people that were worried, or, you know, that are in there for the purpose of making sure that the financial system survives, the financial system, banking system survives. Not, not that they're worried about the American economy, you know, who's the public, who the, represents the public and worried about the American economy, Nick, okay? Um, I don't want to get on an aside, but I have to get on an aside right here. Now, uh, you talked about, you talked about this fact, and, and, you know, think about these, you know, rah-rah Americans on CNBC and Fox Business, and I do watch them all the time, by the way. Um, they bring on some expert, and they say, uh, well, where would you put your money? You know, and, and they know that the American economy is in the tank. You know, you know what they say? They say, oh, I'd put my, my money in overseas markets. Okay, now where do they get that money? Okay, where do they get that money? They get that money by the trillions of dollars 
of dollar U.S. denominated debt that either the Treasury has enabled by borrowing it and giving it to the banks, or that the Fed itself has, you know, taken, again, created U.S. dollar denominated, therefore, taxpayer obligations, future obligations of the United States of America, okay, and made them available for zero to something between zero and less than zero in real terms, okay? And uh, and they're saying, oh, take that money and invest it overseas. Invest it in a foreign place because that's where you can make more money with that money, okay? So that you can see that the investor's consciousness is strictly about making more money. It's not about putting the people back to work. It's not about making up any wages. It's not about keeping people in their houses. They don't ask them that on CNBC and Fox Business. They don't say, what can we do to preserve the economy? What can we do to have a healthy, well-educated workforce You know, in this country? They don't say that. They say, where can I make more money? And they'll advise them to put it overseas. They'll put it in, they'll put it in Bahrain, you know? They'll put it into China. They'll put it into the. They'll put it into the return of uh, you know of, from a from a bank that that's an enemy of, of of the United States or a potential enemy of the United States. Okay. And I am that kind of nationalist. Okay. I am a nationalist that says it's our money system. The money system of the United States of America should be used to better. The people of the United States of America. I'm not saying that we should ignore our, you know, obligations to help the rest of the world at all. We should do it with an open book, you know, saying this is what we're doing, and this is why I've worked for international organizations, trying to do some good things in foreign countries, and I'm still, you know, I still, I'm still on the board, board private, okay, but we do use government money. Point being, point being, it's the money interests that's controlling the government. It's not the other way around. Now, we happen to have, you know, the most private among the central banks. And uh, it's an interesting enigma of the, of the uh, overall situation because people are starting to understand what it means. Like, for instance, when the Fed takes out dollar U.S. denominated uh, dollars and they're ultimately the uh, burden of the taxpayers of the United States, that is to say the United States of America, uh, versus uh, Great Britain where there's a more government control bank where uh, <clears throat> the money that's being borrowed uh, is actually more of a burden, a direct burden to the government as opposed to the economy, the, the economy. So there's a lot of looking at, you know, what's, what, what the mechanics of that, working that out. But nothing supersedes the fact that it's the money power that's in control. Um, you know, I was just, I was rereading um, American Monetary Policy, which is Golden Weiser's book, um, about about these structures because why? Because that's what you know the that's what the central bank research papers are about these days, and um, you know Golden Weiser you know made a comment in there. He said you know people are worried uh, you know people worry about the independence of the uh, of the of the central bank and the intrusion of politics into that part of the economy, and he said something to the effect that you know that's that's a errant notion that the intrusion is clearly in the other direction. Okay, the, we have had we are a political economic system. That's why the United States of America is a political economy, you know, geopolitical economy. Uh, for 150 years, uh, you got to realize he, this is a 60-year-old you know, book. Um, he says, and the money power, you know, is the thing that 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 system created, okay, and enabled, you know, the, the banks, and therefore the Federal Reserve Bank, to, uh, to do things. 
It's the Federal Reserve that's intruding on the political economy. Think of it that way.